Hey everyone, this is Gen. How are you guys doing? Today we are going to be covering um, a few more UVM interview questions. So, what are we going to be covering today? Uh, we are going to be covering what is UVM Factory? What is Factory Override? What are different types of Factory Override? And different combinations of these questions that can come up are what are the advantages of having a UVM factory and a factory array? So what is essentially a UVM factory? It is a special kind of a UVM uh, lookup table where all registered objects, transactions, sequence, sequence items, or components, drivers, and scoreboards, monitors are uh, registered. So let's say you have UVM object or you have UVM transaction, UVM sequence or you're extending from UVM sequence item which all independently extend from the UVM object. So if you have object UVM object specific classes then you want to make sure uh, you use a macro called the UVM object utilis. This macro is basically added into your class definition. Um, once you've declared your class, the next thing you want to make sure is you register with the factory using this macro. Uh, this particular argument corresponds to your name, the name of whatever class uh, you have in uh, you are declaring. Uh, then the next thing next thing is once you do this your objects will get registered in the factory The constructor of the class you want to make sure um, the constructor calls of course the The parent constructor new with the uh, with the uh, Argument name uh, which is of type string again. This corresponds to the same name as the class uh, name that you have chosen whereas if you have UVM components again you would need a special macro for that um, to be registered in the lookup table and that macro is UVM component utilis again my component corresponds to whatever uh, kind of um, class you have declared class my driver my monitor my agent that will uh, go here and then once you do this right after declaring your class, um, that will ensure um, that basically your um, components get registered in the factory. Then the, the other thing to make sure is the new constructor that ex that you have uh, sort of like added the definition for in your newly um, declared class. You want to make sure um, it has two arguments. A string name my component or my driver and uh, a UVM component parent essentially which could it be if it's a top level um, UVM component then you can just use this to point to itself and that's about it that's how you register your objects and transactions and sequence items along with the components in the UVM factory now once you've done it what's the next thing then you have something called the factory override so this could be this could also be asked in a way like what are the advantages of factory override or uh, why do we need to register something to uh, the UVM factory so these different kinds of questions can come up and the answer would pretty much be the same where basically uh, you want to answer that the UVM factory uh, is important because um, it allows us uh, to basically um, substitute one class with another derived class also uh, it does not require any recompiles or edits of the test bench um, to achieve a change in behavior of the test bench um, and, um, and basically this change of behavior is done um, without any recompiles so that those th that is a very important thing 
uh, for um, uh, for the factory uh, to declare something inside the factory. Um, then what are two different kinds of factory overrides that are available to us? One is type override. The other one is instance override. So type override is every time a component class type is basically um, created, it will automatically get substituted by the type of the override class um, that you want it to. Um, then, of course, this is only applicable to um, or this is actually applicable to both the UVM object as well as the component because um, there is no notion of hierarchy involved here. Whereas on the other side, the instance override, uh, we are only overriding specific instance. Again, as the name implies, um, it's an instance override. So you only want to override a particular instance with an override type. And um, this is, again, components are the only things that have hierarchy. So it's only applicable to, to them, not to UVM objects, transactions, sequence items, etc. Here, I have sort of like provided you, you guys with the syntax. So basically, pretty much it's set type override by type or set type override by name. Um, and then the, the, the next argument is the is in a string format called the original type or uh, and that's then the second argument is going to be the order type and then you have a boolean argument one or zero basically one would make sure that you want this to take it into effect again you can use it by type only whereas on the other hand when you want to override by instance or instrument one uh, if you want to provide instance override by type or instance override by name you want to uh, do it based on the original type or the override type and then provide the full instance path so that's i think that's about it this this will sort of like answers um most of the questions people would have off of you if you can talk about this and i mean you can go into more details of this but if you're able to answer this much um, the interviewer would know that you know you have spent the time you understand what the concepts are and what essentially is a union factory and uh, what are its advantages and what the union factory override does um, so that's about it thank you everyone um, let me know if you have any questions that you would like me to create a video of. Also, if you have any comments, please do uh, provide me with your feedback. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.